Last video, we extracted zinc and manganese dioxide from alkaline batteries. In this video, we will be washing and processing the zinc for use in later projects. First, let's look at how an alkaline battery works. In an alkaline battery, there are four main components. The cathode, anode, electrode, and electrolyte. The cathode is generally manganese dioxide. This is form-fitted to the inside of the steel battery case. Inside that is a piece of paper which separates the manganese dioxide from the anode, zinc, both of which are soaked in an electrolyte solution. The electrolyte solution is a salt dissolved in a solvent which allows the electrons to flow from positive to negative. In our case, the dissolved electrolyte is potassium hydroxide. The electrode is a graphite rod. The potassium hydroxide oxidizes the zinc and manganese dioxide, which causes electrons to flow from the cathode to the anode. This causes an electrical potential of approximately 1.5 volts to build up across the terminals. Now, since we have extracted the cathode and the anode, they can be used, but first we have to remove the potassium hydroxide from it so it doesn't contaminate future reactions. Luckily, it is soluble in water, which makes this extraction pretty easy. First, the zinc paste we collected is added to a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. This will be the primary washing vessel. Once all of the zinc is in the flask, deionized water in a wash bottle is used to wash the paste off of the inside of the glass. The flask is then topped off to 250 milliliters with the deionized water. The flask is then topped with plastic wrap and shaken vigorously to wash the zinc particles. This is done multiple times to try and dissolve off as much potassium hydroxide as possible. You will notice a white powder remains in suspension after the flask is shaken. Initially, this confused me because I'd never had this happen before in previous runs, so I decided to do some research. If you search on Google for the Material Safety and Data Sheet, or MSDS, of the product you are using, you can find a list of the chemicals in the product. This was my first time using Rayovac brand alkaline batteries, so I wasn't sure of what exact chemicals were in it. When I opened up the MSDS, I saw all the chemicals I was expecting, but something else was there as well. Barium sulfate. All of the batteries I had done previously to this point must have been old enough where they didn't contain barium sulfate in them, as this was the first time I noticed this. It is in about a 5% overall concentration. If we pull up the PubChem page for barium sulfate, we quickly learn that it is quite insoluble in water, which explains why it is in suspension in the solvent. Also note that barium salts are pretty nasty, so don't try this one at home unless you're very well versed in the proper handling of toxic chemicals. To start washing the zinc, the flask is capped with some plastic wrap and shaken vigorously to get as much barium sulfate in suspension as possible. After shaking, zinc is let to settle out. Because the zinc is much heavier than the barium sulfate, it will settle out much faster. Zinc is shown on the bottom of the flask, and that means that it is time to decant the upper layer of suspended barium sulfate. The flask is topped off to 250 milliliters again, and the process is repeated two more times. The flask is then topped off with water, capped, and set aside for the filtration. The filtration is set up by suspending a funnel on a ring stand over a receiving beaker. 
A filter paper is added to the funnel and wet with a wash bottle so it sticks to the side of the funnel. The flask is uncapped and most of the water is decanted off of the top. Plastic wrap is applied to the top and the flask is shaken to get as much zinc in suspension as possible. It is immediately decanted into the funnel. While the zinc is filtering out, the flask is refilled with deionized water, shaken, and filtered again. A wash bottle is used to wash out any remaining zinc into the filter. The funnel is then topped off with deionized water and it is left to filter. After all of the water has passed through the filter, the filter paper is removed. The powder is squeezed to remove as much of the remaining water as possible and it is set out to dry on a piece of aluminum foil. As much zinc as possible is removed from the filter paper and transferred to the foil. The zinc is spread as thinly as possible on foil with a wooden stir rod. This will help it dry faster. After this, the zinc is set out to dry for 72 hours. Shown is the product left after 72 hours of air drying. It weighs approximately 21.2 grams. This will be used in a future video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. I try and respond to all my comments. Subscribe for more chemistry content. Thanks.